For over two years now, I've been making portfolio update videos every month sharing my buys, sells, dividends received, thoughts on the market, and more. I do these to hold myself accountable every month along with look back and see in the growth. When I made my first portfolio update, our portfolio value was around $5,000. Today, it is sitting at $18,000. I talk about how my investment thesis on companies is changing, my investment strategy, so much more. May was definitely a really weird month for my dividend portfolio. We're seeing some huge gains in some stocks and some huge losses in some stocks. And yes, I show losses. My name isn't Jeremy. But on this channel, I believe in transparency and showing everything the good times and the bad times. If you appreciate that and want to stick around for the journey, it would mean a lot if you could subscribe. Join the Discord link in the description so you don't have to wait every month to see my buys. So today we're going to be going over my portfolio, my buys, my sells this month, my dividends received, and I will be answering your questions for 600 subscribers. Thank you so much. With all that out of the way, roll the intro. Hello, I like money. Currently, our portfolio value is sitting a little below it, whereas last month, currently $18,096. It's been around this $18,000 mark for the last few weeks, a little under. Market valuation has been a little volatile recently. Microsoft is currently the largest position in my portfolio and has just surpassed $2,000 in market valuation. Microsoft is trading really high right now, and it's almost up $100 from where I last bought it just a few months ago, which is absolutely nuts. It's just a pure example of why you shouldn't wait on the sidelines to invest in amazing quality companies. Then we have Apple, which has had a nice little run as well, which is nearly $1,600 worth of Apple in my portfolio. Great to see, but I would like to see them hike the dividend a little more next time. But they are printing money, so I cannot complain from my side. Then is our third largest business. We have Starbucks, which makes up $1,300 for the portfolio right now. Starbucks has actually been on a bit of a dip recently. I will, I'm not looking to particularly add to Starbucks right now, but if it reaches the 80s and maybe even 70s again, I will definitely be adding. Next, we are probably the most financially sound company in the world, which is Visa. I actually bought some Visa, and I'll talk about that in my buy segment of the video. Visa is a position, as I mentioned, with a swab transition. I will be dollar cost averaging and buying on dips with this company. I want to have it be in the 1500s range in the portfolio and make up 10% of it for sure. Next, we have McDonald's, which I have $906 worth of McDonald's right now. McDonald's is trading so high right now in price, but don't be surprised if you see me adding to this position and slowly dollar cost averaging into it. Next, we got Realty Income, which makes up $883 worth of portfolio right now. Realty Income's been on a bit of a dip recently, and this is another position in my portfolio that I am looking to add to right now. I think it is at an attractive price. Another company that's been on a dip recently, which is Abbey, which makes up $878 for the portfolio right now. Abbey's been on a bit of a dip recently as well, but they are up today. If Abbey goes below $130, I would definitely be adding. Next on the portfolio, we have Coca-Cola, which makes up $711 for the portfolio right now. Coke is actually a company I'm considered selling off. I probably won't, though. The most logical thing that I've thought of with Coke right now is rebalancing some of that money into Pepsi, which I think is the higher quality company at the end of the day. And lastly, we have a company that's been in the news a lot recently, which is Target, and I've been buying up Target, and I will talk about that later in the portfolio update. Before we get into the buys of the portfolio update, I want to talk a little bit about the transition of using Charles Schwab as my brokerage. My Ameritrade account transitioned into Schwab this week, but I think the biggest advantage or the biggest thing of this transition is that I'll be able to buy fractional shares. I can basically buy any company in the S&P 500 and as, as a fractional share, which I couldn't have done with TD Ameritrade. That's definitely the biggest change that's happened so far. I, it's gonna take a little bit while to get used to the new app and the new brokerage, overall just cha placing orders and stuff. It has been a little confusing with me reinvesting my dividends. But giving me access to fractional shares is like giving a natural bodybuilder access to Tren and a bunch of other anabolic steroids. It is just a great option for me. With me having access to fractional shares, I can buy into companies that I couldn't have done previously, i.e. Costco. I don't have to dish out hundreds of dollars just to buy one share of a stock and build up a position. And I can conserve and deploy capital even better and more conveniently for me. Overall, I think this is a huge change and a huge upgrade to the portfolio, and I've been loving it this week. I feel like Vecna, to be honest. But with all that out of the way, let's get into my buys this month. 
So basically for my buys this month, I did have a very active month of buying and building up in the portfolio as that lawn mowing money is definitely rolling in right now. This month I also sold out of some positions as well. To start the month off, I bought two shares of SCHD at $70.86. Following that up, I added more to that SCHD position, buying two extra shares at $69.94. Anything you know in that 70s and even below 70s mark with SCHD, I feel long term that's a steal. Currently, SCHD is trading at around $71.50. Right now, SCHD is underperforming the S&P 500 majorly because of their lack of exposure to technology, which has gone up a lot recently, and their bigger exposure to financials, which has gone down recently, leading SCHD to trail as, as the S&P 500. I'm sorry I'm stuttering, guys. How could I not get this excited about buying SCHD at these prices? Currently, SCHD makes up around 10% of the portfolio. I'm willing to go up to 15% on that. I'm not actively looking to buy SCHD, but I do think anything below $70 with SCHD is definitely not out of, the, out of the picture for me to add to the portfolio. You could see me just dollar cost averaging into it and buying smaller fractions of shares instead of whole shares, as I mentioned earlier. Next, the end of an error has occurred. I sold my Tattoo Chef position at a whopping 94% loss. Thankfully, I understood the risk when buying into the position, and I only bought three shares of the stock, so I only lost like $45 or $50 at the end of the day. Better than Jeremy's $2 million, which he could make back if he boxed me, but he's not because he's docking me. My mistake here with Tattoo Chef was being too gullible about others, the other people's sentiment on the company. I think we all know who I'm talking about. Proud of myself, though, for understanding the risk when going in and only buying three shares. Next, I bought one share of Target at $144.44. I talked a whole lot about Target and really went really in-depth last week's on last week's video. But basically, right now, my investment thesis with Target, I believe it was at fair value at $160, $170, and other valuation metrics show that as well. I believe that overall, as the U.S. economy grows long-term, Target will grow along with that. Target is a company that's amazing to own during the bull runs, but during the bear runs, nobody wants to be in it. So I want to buy into positions when nobody wants to hold the stock, and especially right now with the recent news coming out about you know the whole LGBTQ pride situation, from my perspective, what I'm seeing is a whole lot of fear around a company with no actual fundamental change in the business whatsoever. It is very likely that over the long term, this is unlikely to affect Target's long-term financials such as free cash flow, revenues, etc. Target, I believe long term, is an amazing company to own and I buy companies to hold for 20 plus years. Right now, I think Target is at a good valuation. Another end of an era with the stock and I sold my entire pos remaining position in Southern Company at a 10% gain at $7.44. Southern did its purpose, that's for sure in my portfolio. Selling out at a 10% gain, this is a company that I hold for a year and a half. At the end of the day, I had a relatively small position in Southern Company and I saw it trading at a pretty decent value where I could sell out at some solid gains and put it, in my opinion, in a better quality company that's trading at an attractive valuation with higher dividend yield and higher dividend growth rate. I saw this as an example of selling high quality to buy even a higher quality. Southern just has pretty slow dividend growth rates, but they do have a consistent paying growing dividend. So at the end of the day, there is a chance that I do buy back into the Southern company, I just not now. I'd preferably like to buy in at cyclical lows. So as I mentioned, I put all that Southern company in those gains and I bought six shares of Vici at $30.61. I believe fair value for Vici is $36, $37, and I thought this was a very good buy for me this month. And I'm happy to get more real estate exposure to one of the highest quality REITs, as I mentioned, into Vici. And now the fun begins. These are my fractional share buys for the month. I put $25 into Target, and I bought this at around $133. Then I put $30 into Visa. I got this at a really good value right now for Visa considering how highly it's been priced recently. I got this at $217. Visa is a position that I'm going to be aiming to build up as a core position in my portfolio and definitely have it be up near 8-10% to of my portfolio allocation. And lastly for May, I put $30 in Union Pacific and I got this at around $192, which I saw as good value to buy into the railroad giant. Union Pacific, in my opinion, is a monopolistic company with monopolistic features. You are not going to build a new railroad to compete with Union Pacific, and there are only a few companies in the railroad industry which compete with them. 
Therefore, I think Union Pacific also hasn't touched their full potential when it comes to running the business and overall operations as CEO Lance Fritz stepped down a few months ago. UNP is definitely going to be a position that I'm going to be looking to build up this summer for sure. Anything below $200 look for me to die cost average and, and build up this position. As I mentioned, I don't think they've scratched the surface of where they can be. Keep in mind, they've had amazing returns over the last few years with an amazing growing dividend in the 10 to 15% range. Now let's move on to the dividends that I received in the month of May. Now, obviously, as I've been trying to make the portfolio more higher quality, that's not going to, the month that a company pays out does not dictate, obviously, whether I'm buying it or selling. To start the month off of May, I got $2.26 from a very small position that I've held for a while now, which is Hasbro. I am well into the red with Hasbro being down nearly 35%. This is one of the first like five or 10 stocks that I ever bought in my portfolio. And quite frankly, I don't completely understand till this day why I bought it. I've been slaughtered over this position over the last three years and I'm definitely gonna look to sell out of it. I might wait till another mini bull run or another bull run to sell this company though for sure. Next, we got our monthly dividend from Realty Not Reality Income, $3.76 from them. Good to see that compounding every month. I also believe that Realty Income's at a pretty attractive price right now as well. Next, we got a pretty large dividend from AbV. We got $9.41 from them. I reinvested that at $146.57, which I think is a pretty solid price to reinvest at. But again, I think AbV's yield in dividend growth is just insane. I do question though how sustainable that dividend growth will be long term, but they have shown that they're growing free cash flows even after the Humira ex patent expired, which is definitely positive news to see from Abby's management. Next, we got a whopping $2.18 from my second largest holding, Apple. With that said, I would like to see larger dividend growth from Apple in the future, but if that means that they can't grow their business as fast as they have been growing it or it has as fast as they can grow it, I'm not in for it. I think the long term as Apple matures as a company and as Apple really establishes itself, I think that dividend growth will be insane from them. Apple's also making me more of an owner in the company with their constant share buyback program that they do. And lastly, for the month of May, we got a company that I love, which is Starbucks, and we got $7.11 from Starbucks, and we reinvested that at $99.15, which I actually think is a solid price to reinvest in for Starbucks, considering how it's been trading recently. Starbucks is a core position in my portfolio right now. I'm not planning to buy any soon, but if the stock dips into the 90s and even the 80s, I will definitely be buying. Right now, our projected yearly dividend amount is $506.01. I do still believe that we will have our $100 dividend month in December. And that will be a glorious month once it comes. We can see here on my income chart that the income has kind of been inconsistent between the month. This is obviously because of me selling out of some positions and buying the new positions, which pay out in different months. I'm not reading into this much at all. And long term, it will be nice to look back at these charts and see how much growth we've made over the years. And guys, of course, we hit 600 subscribers, so I'm going to be answering all your questions now. To start off, we got a question from Gold Bean Dog, and he asked, what would be your advice for investing inside an HSA account? An HSA account is a health savings account, which you could basically take out money tax-free for medical expenses, etc. I would say you never know when you're going to actually need the money, so I would definitely play it more conservative. I would just buy index funds, broad market index funds, SCHD if you're feeling lucky. Life is very unpredictable, man, so uh, I would just definitely go more conservative with that. Um, don't put it in any, you know, tattooed chef holdings or whatever, or even your classic dividend stocks like the ones that I talked about today. Um, you never know what's going to happen with stocks or your medical, you know, stuff. So just play it safe, buy an index fund. Next, we got a question from Josh Bean. He asks, which dividend stock are you looking to grow your position in next? As for companies, I'm looking to build up my holding in this summer. I would definitely say Visa, Union Pacific, Kroger, Vici. And the companies that I'm looking to add to the portfolio, as I kind of mentioned in last week's video, definitely Costco, Texas Roadhouse, those are the big two candidates to be added to the portfolio, and I'm definitely going to be looking at Costco this week for sure. Next, we got a question from Jonathan Judas, and as per usual, go check out his Discord. He asked basically, do you have any buys of companies like a Dividend King, and will you ever drop a country because they cut a dividend? This is a really good set of questions from John, because I do actually have really like winded answers about this. To start off with the Dividend Kings thing, I think my opinion has changed over the last year and a half, especially with companies like 3M, 
who, you know, a lot of these dividend king companies are just, you know, at the end of the day, they're weaker companies, I feel, sometimes. The example of 3M is obvious, but, you know, just because a company's a dividend king, you obviously cannot predict the future and what's going to happen with their business whatsoever. So I don't prefer a company if they're a dividend king, dividend aristocrat, etc. I look at the business fundamentals now. Their business model, if they have a moat, how profitable they are, free cash flows, capital expenditures, etc. In his second question, I actually have a really good answer to as well because I've it's been something that I've been presented with recently, obviously, with companies like VF Corp and Intel. Um, I will it will depend. Um, with Disney, I believe their dividend cut was just because their something was out of the, their control, and that was the reason they had to cut it. With companies like Intel and VF Corp, they were just poorly ran companies, and that's why they had to, you know, cut the dividend at the end of the day. And when a company cuts a dividend, it is likely better for the long-term health of the business. But at the same time, I've realized that there is going to be, you know, a long and painful downfall of the company after they cut the dividend with the cap, with you know, the stock price in general. You could look at this with companies like Intel, VF Corp, AT&T, etc. And that's something I've really learned over, you know, my time in investing so far is when a company gets a dividend, just sell out. Don't wait because um, you're going to experience a lot more, you know, losses from what I've seen so far, at least. John also asked, when do I choose whether I reinvest or not reinvest my dividends? Now, this is something that I've also been presented with with my transition to Schwab as well. Right now, for all my positions, I reinvest my dividends, but this month, my dividends will not be in re reinvesting for some reason because of the transition. So there are some companies that I'm going to be getting payments from that I'm not going to be reinvesting the dividend in and putting it to other positions. Um, I think it just overall depends on my investment thesis on the company. Long term, if I, if I envision myself owning this company for 20 plus years, then I will likely be putting the dividend from one company into the better company and just overall relies on a company's health. And lastly, everybody, of course, channel slash life update, what you all really came here for. So, I'm obviously almost done with school. I finish in exactly one week, and I just have one exam, thankfully, on June 14th. This summer, I'm going to be going very hard on YouTube. I'm going to be posting shorts probably daily, and I'm going to be uploading every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So, I'm going to be uploading three times a week, and it's going to be a grind. This is our final push to, you know, get towards monetization. With that said, I'm also getting a, a big setup, a big upgrade in quality. And as you guys can see here, thanks to Alex Rezzi, everybody's favorite Joseph Carlson fanboy, we are officially in the quality era. I'm going to be getting a new microphone, computer, editing software, everything. I'm going to have so much more time this year because I retired from baseball and I'm just focusing on lifting and making content for, you know, dividend investing. Um, I've been a lot more active on Twitter recently. If you haven't already followed, you know where to go. Link in the description. Um, but, you know, this summer's going to be a grind. I'm going to be, you know, just dialing in on everything. I'm going to be putting all my attention and energy and effort, everything towards YouTube, and we're going to make this work. So expect a lot of big things out of the channel this summer, a whole lot of new stuff coming to the channel. Be ready for it. Of course, subscribe. As for me personally, I've been presented with a lot of new emotions recently. Um, tragedies, um, happy times, sad times, etc. But, you know, I'm really starting to, you know, hit a groove for YouTube. Finding passion in making videos. Finding passion in investing content. Being more active in the community, etc. I'm looking forward to the summer a lot. And I hope you guys are too. With that said, that's the end of the video. Join the Discord link in the description. You don't have to wait every month for these portfolio updates. I put, we talk about everything on there, talk with like-minded investors, etc. Um, and, of course, do dividend stocks on drugs. Have a good one.